Has Tunisia's democratic transition reached a dead end? Is Tunisia facing a constitutional crisis or did the Tunisian government to, or did the failure of Tunisian governments to improve the lives of their people produce the current predicament? Welcome to Connections, the Arab Studies Institute's interview program on current events, policy questions, and new ideas. I'm Mu'ain Rabbani, and for this episode, we're delighted to be speaking with Tunisian journalist and researcher, Hodam Ziyoudat, who joins us from the country's capital, Tunis. Hodam Ziyoudat is a researcher and journalist who between 2011 and 2018 covered the uprisings and their aftermath in Tunisia and Libya for international outlets, including Al Jazeera English, CBC, and BBC. She is a co-founder of ADAM, the first Black Tunisian Association, and also of the Voice of Tunisian Black Women Collective. She has published widely on both Tunisia and Libya, including for the Brookings Institution and the Carnegie Endowment. Hodam Ziyoudat, it's a real pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you, mind for having me. Thank you. Um, perhaps we can start with an overview of the most recent developments. Um, Basically, who did what and why? And what is the significance of this moment for Tunisia? Well, on the Republic Day on July 25th, uh, at night, Sai, uh, Sai, Tunisian president, decided to dismiss his uh, prime minister, Hisham al Shishi, and his government. He also froze the activity of the uh, Tunisian parliament by activating Article 80. He lifted the immunity of the MPs and used his discretionary powers to do that, given that Article 80 has 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 in own interpretations over uh, what could uh, what would allow him to do uh, to take some measures, especially in exceptional circumstances. Um, some of those circumstances are the fact that the country was facing an imminent threat or danger that was deemed uh, um, essential for the head of the government or the executive to uh, to uh, to take his decision um, that 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 uh, this decision usually uh, had to be uh, had to be taken in consultation with other with other heads of the executive uh, i.e the uh, the speaker of the parliament and the prime minister but uh, that, but that didn't happen so it it, it, it made um, people um, at the time um, wonder, what made Saeed, you know, take that decision without consulting with them, even if um, uh, there were some rumors that, you know, that was the case, but, you know, this remains quite, you know, vague at, um, uh, until now. So um, the reasons, again, for, for, for him taking this decision is because uh, the, uh, the Tunisian parliament has failed, you know, uh, to keep some kind of decorum. We have seen, unfortunately, you know, um, scenes of violence uh, committed against, you know, some MPs, you know, uh, mainly uh, female MPs, you know, from, um, from some uh, um, parliamentarians uh, who are uh, linked, you know, to the, uh, to, to the ruling party of Islamist Nahda, particularly from Etilaf al Karama, who are, in some ways, who are, the, the, you know, the more, also another conservative uh, uh, political uh, Party or uh, or uh, or uh, coalition party. Um, there also is the reason because the Tunisian people have expressed a sense of fatigue and anger with the general atmosphere, especially when it comes to you know, the Tunisian parliament. And uh, there were protests of people, um, Tunisians, on on the day of, of uh, the Tunisian Republic on July the twenty fifth, asking for the dis dissolution of the parliament, and that kind of sent you know, um, uh, um, uh, a clear and positive message for Kais Saeed to, you know, to take his, uh, to, uh, to, to, to implement his, uh, his decision of dissolving, uh, of freezing basically the, the, the parliament for the time being for 30 days. Um, and I think that the, this comes at a surprise, as a surprise for a lot of Tunisians that Kais Saeed has taken this drastic measure, but uh, it's not, uh, it has been, it ha he has been, quote unquote, threatening, you know, to, to activate Article 80 because of the deadlock that the country has reached when it comes into this political crisis, which is not, which, which goes back, of course, to, um, to after, uh, to back to, the, to, to, to 2014, and it has exacerbated, you know, after the election in 2019. Uh, so, um, uh, the, Said, I think that one of the one of the rationale for taking this decision is also the fact 
that uh, this crisis needed to be diffused so that uh, so that the Tunisian uh, ruling uh, political party uh, uh, um, of, of another um, that was deemed, you know, responsible for for the for this for, for this political crisis are. Um, uh, will we'll, we'll, we'll review, you know, their um, uh, their stance when it comes, you know, to uh, you know the, the 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 blocking of the of the political process, especially the institution of the of the Tunisian um, Constitutional Court, which is has been blamed on the ruling party of another of having blocked, you know, the uh, the, the the institution of that of that um, of that court. Uh, also, the continuing power struggle between different. Uh, different uh, pol political parties from on the one hand, you know, uh, Nahda as a conservative Islamist party and its allies uh, from Qalb Tunis. And on the other hand, uh, you know, political parties from the old regime in particular, um, that uh, the, 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 the one that is headed by Abir Musi who represents the uh, Disturian party, you know, which is um, a successor party from, uh, from the uh, regime of uh, Burki Ben Ben Ali. And so, this political wrangling between different political parties has made things un almost untenable for 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 Qais Saeed, and not also him, but also for for um, for the Tunisian population. That's so in in in, the, in this in this polit in this uh, uh, deadlock, you know, uh, um, a big threat, you know, to the uh, to the security of the country. And uh, he decided, of course, to, you know, to take that drastic measure and froze the parliament for thirty days. Of course, that decision was was not met, met by. Uh, by by a lot, by some Tunisians, especially you know, uh, experts in constitutional law, um, uh, who, who thought that you know that was considered as a coup, and so the term has been uh, you know used you know over and over again, and people were, were wondering: Is this a coup? Is this uh, auto golpe? Is this uh, is this another another? Um, is this a, is, is this president trying you know to uh, to uh, to to make the country the country you know enter into another? Uh, political crisis. So it's it, all these, you know, uh, um, uh, these, you know, um, uh, issues, you know, of uh, what what type of what type of uh, decision, the, the type of decision that that Said has taken, you know, made uh, um, made uh, law experts, you know, question the legitimacy of his his uh, of his move and uh, whether. Um, that uh, that the fact of activating Article 80 is is something that would uh, would be um, sustainable. I mean, if the 30 days of freezing the parliament is enough, you know, to to get the country out of this crisis. So many questions are, you know, are remain unanswered for the time being, and we, everyone is we are everyone is is on a wait and see kind of, kind of mode. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you you focus a lot on Article 80, and when um, President uh, Sayed invoked it, we saw celebrations in the streets. We saw denunciations um, of, of the measure as a coup, or as you put it, uh, an autogolpe. And I think this raises um, a broader question about the nature of the crisis in Tunisia. And you've already addressed some of that. Um, should we see it um, primarily as a power struggle between competing political forces, and particularly between the Islamist and Nahda party, which has had um, a parliamentary majority or has been the largest party in Tunis um, during the past decade between a Nahda and its various opponents. Um, do you find the comparisons that some are making between Tunisia and Egypt convincing? Um, or should we interpret recent events as the outcome of a deeper malaise afflicting Tunisia and the Tunisian state in recent years? Well, definitely, you know the the the, the current crisis is is um go with, I mean is, is is a power struggle between different uh, you know political uh, parties or uh, political um, uh, alliances. Uh, on the one hand, from between you know uh, t Tunisian Islamists and their allies um, uh, from Qalb Tunis or Tilaf uh, al-Karama, and on the other hand, you know uh, leftists, but also uh, social democrats, uh, including you know the opposition, uh, those from the uh, um, pan-Arabist from the uh, communist parties, and all of them they were holding was not responsible for this this stalemate. So, um, and we have seen, as I said, you know, earlier on how 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 the parliament uh, the par the parliament speaker has become extremely contentious in you know, Rashid al-Ghannoushi because 
of, uh, of us. Sorry, so, if I may, who has been kind of the dominant political figure in Tunisia since 2011? Exactly. I mean, Rashid Ghanoushi is the head of the uh, of the uh, of the Nahda party, and uh, he has become the uh, the the head of the uh, Tunisian parliament in 2019. Um, and it was his his uh, his election was very controversial because uh, because of the the refusal of uh, a lot of uh, people in the opposition um, of, of of his nomination. Uh, at, at, at the head of the parliament, uh, at the, at the, at the Tunisian, as, a, as the head of Tunisian parliament, because of uh, of his controversial actually um, uh, stance, you know, uh, given the fact that he has never been uh, someone who some would think as uh, being capable, you know, to to unite Tunisians, you know, unlike his predecessors. So. Um, so it is definitely this this power struggle, you know, between these different, you know, uh, uh, the different political factions. But the the, the crisis goes deeper, you know. Um, uh, if we scratch, you know, the surface of this this whole crisis, and it goes deeper back to 2013, you know, when uh, the same, you know, Tunisian uh, uh, Islamist party of Nahda had uh, had had been tested, you know, severely in in the summer of 2013, when a lot of Tunisians and they came on the street, you know, and protested against, you know, the Troika government at the time, and uh, there was a fear at the time of, you know, uh, of of the the country, you know, uh, sl uh, you know, sliding into civil war. Uh, thankfully, there were there were. Um, Another had to, you know, to step down, and there was a national dialogue that was initiated by uh, by uh, Tunisian civil society, in particular, you know, the strongest um, uh, um, party in the Tunisian civil, uh, civil society, the uh, the labor union UGTT, uh, the, the ones who won't go on and you know win the Nobel Peace Prize for having you know um, uh, helped you know um, diffuse that crisis, uh, but also the fact that you know another has. Failed, you know, not only Nada, but its allies have failed, you know, in in responding to the Tunisian people's, you know, um, uh, um, um, uh, 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 to the, to their expectations from the Tunisian revolution you know, of dignity, of you know, uh, of uh, solving you know socioeconomic issues, you know, finding jobs. You know, the country you now is is in a big crisis ever since, especially with with the with the with the rise of unemployment, and. Um, and again, what, what, what happens in, in uh, you know, um, uh, in July the 25th, you know, was the, was the, the, the you know, the, 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 uh, the, the issue of, you know, Saeed, you know, taking that decision of freezing the, the, the parliament and, you know, uh, this, I mean, not allowing, you know, Tunisian MPs, you know, to join, you know, the, the, the parliament to have seen, you know, that, you know, uh, symbolic, you know, uh, video of Ghanoush, you know, almost pleading, you know, in front of the Tunisian parliament, you know, Tunisian military to let him in and the, and the answer of one of the military uh, officials, you know, saying, you know, we're serving Tunisian people, we can't do that. That probably kind of brought some, made some outsiders. Um, I wonder if there, there was a military coup, which is definitely not the case because Tunisia is different from Egypt and so, uh, the the comparison with the, with Egypt, I think it's it's um, uh, I mean for Tunisians it's, it's unfair for sure and and there is uh, and there's no no there, it's 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 um I I think it's it's um also um not sustainable having to 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 look at both countries you know for, with the same lens and it's very kind of essentializing Tunisia and try to project you know what happened to, uh, in Egypt to Tunisian to the Tunisian case uh, even when we talk about the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in Egypt who are different from the Tunisian uh, Muslims you know um, you know very well that Tunisia Nahda have decided you know to to um, to divorce themselves you know basically from from uh, from that uh, heavy you know uh, you know, um, uh, the, uh, you know, um, connection or um, the control uh, that they have, uh, that usually the Muslim Brotherhood has got on different, you know, political factions across the Arab world and try to, to look more like this modern uh, Muslim Democrats, you know, uh, quote unquote, as they call themselves and uh, try to, to make themselves feel closer to the Turkish model of Akbar, you know, of Erdogan. So, so the, 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 the Egyptian comparison is, I, I, I think it's that's unfair. And, and if I may, have, it's uh, yeah, perhaps yeah. two other differences are also that the Nahda did not seek to monopolize political power the way 
that the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt did between 2011 and 2013. And uh, Sayyid is, if I'm not mistaken, also doesn't have a military background as uh, Al-Sisi did. Absolutely. I mean, Sayyid is an outsider. I mean, he's, uh, mm. he's some kind of, you know, uh, let's call it some some people would call it you know intellectual populist you know and mm -hmm. uh, not in this in this in the, i mean not in the same vein as trump or orban of, of of hungary or bolsonaro but someone who is specific and special and mm -hmm. and uh, being from outside i mean being an outsider you know that 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 what made him appealing to tunisians now when, when it comes to the tunisian islamists the fact that they didn't seek to monopolize and go into a violent confrontation uh, whether with 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 security forces, because in Tunisia security forces are uh, they have more um, uh, more relevance when it comes, you know, to uh, political power than uh, the Tunisian army. The Tunisian army has always been historically very neutral. They have never had any political role to play whatsoever. Um, I have to disagree, though, that that they didn't try to monopolize the political scene. I think not that they. they they tried to manipulate things, you know, in a way that they didn't appear to monopolize in the political scene, but uh, but then they 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 were able, you know, to um, to capitalize on what has become known as the consensus consensus politics, you know, by aligning themselves, you know, with uh, firstly in two thousand and eleven and thirteen with the, with the, with the other. Um, "Quote unquote secular parties from the Kettle and from uh, CPF, which is uh, which is the party of uh, former President Moussa Marzouki, and um, it ended up in a you know in a in a total failure that you know those political parties have have almost you know uh, lost you know any credibility because they were aligned with unpopular um, uh, uh, um, uh, and a popular uh, party like Nahda with let's say the more secular factions of the Tunisian population. The same kind of uh, scenario has happened in 2014 uh, when uh, Nahda has allied with Nida Tunis of uh, former president uh, Beja Qaid Sibsi where people were shocked to see that you know the, there was this you know this alliance between the old regime and the Islamists. And this is what made people always question the narrative that another always saying we have never ruled, we have never had any political, uh, we have never controlled you know, the political scene, but they were able to, to manipulate that narrative in a way to show that, that through consensus politics, they, they, they didn't really rule, but, the, but behind the scenes, you know, everything was uh, done in a way that another stayed in power since 2011 until now. And I think I saw it kind of capitalized on the anger of people where, mm -hmm. when they were seeing that the fact that this, this, this party has been in power for too long, for, for a decade and nothing has changed, you know, there needs to be a way to, 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 to get rid of them, quote unquote. And so the fact that, you know, that he used the constitution that was drafted by another and, uh, and other political parties, you know, was a big shock to another itself that, you know, uh, that even trying, they tried to negotiate before, you know, the, the July the 25th, you know, um, decision of Qaysaid, you know, to, to, to try and find a way to, through this political deadlock by, um, by asking for, 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 um, for early uh, legislative elections, which was refused, of course, by Said. And so that, that kind of made people realize that another's maybe days are, are, are numbered, you know, uh, ever since. But, you know, again, we have to wait and see what will happen in the next few days and weeks. Right. Um, on, on, on that note, um, as you know, Tunisia is often described as the Cinderella story of the Arab upheaval because it hasn't collapsed into civil conflict and su successfully established the basics of democratic governance. But have we perhaps been missing the main story in the country, which is not about elections and parliamentary sovereignty, or at least not only about elections and parliamentary sovereignty, but rather about the failure of the state, of its institutions, of its political class, and or at least of successive governments to address Tunisia's deepening socioeconomic crisis over the past decade, um, exhibited most recently by the government's failure to um, confront um, the COVID-19 pandemic. 
exactly. I mean, yes, absolutely. I think the 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 the, uh, the characterization of Tunisia being the only success story, you know, has uh, has unfortunately, you know, uh, not materialized into uh, something, you know, concrete when it comes, you know, to the whole democratic transition that has stalled. Uh, since you know 2013, you know the first crisis in when uh, when uh, when the Nahda was 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 met Nahda and its allies was met with the first uh, uh, public protest against its rule uh, and in a, in a summer that saw the the, the assassination of a, of, a, of a political op opponent you know at the time uh, the um, uh, the MP Mohamed Al Brahmi and. Um, and, from and, from one of the left parties, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, from, yeah, from the uh, pan-Arabist, you know, uh, right. party uh, at the time. So uh, the fact that uh, uh, that the uh, the whole democratic transition has stalled and the blame has been squarely put on another for failing not only to address the socioeconomic issues but also to you know to root out corruption. In fact, in, in, people they 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 um, uh, people have blamed uh, another of. Yeah, of, of in some ways, you know, uh, courting with the, with the corrupt officials, especially from the old regime, in order to survive, and um, the, and 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 we have seen also, you know, uh, increasing um, uh, increasing uh, poverty, you know, uh, the uh, rise in prices, you know, of uh, staple food, and um, um, and um, also the fact that Tunisia had to to to. to um, to, to, to deal with this crisis by adopting very uh, unpopular um, measures, you know, that have been imposed by the, by uh, international financial institutions, like, such as the IMF and World Bank. And these policies were, 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 were in some ways, you know, uh, um, uh, opposed by the, by, by, uh, by the main actor in Tunisian civil society, the uh, labor union of GGTT. Um, so in some ways, the, the rule of, uh, of, the, of the Nahda and its allies was seen as an olig oligarchic rule where business, corrupt businessmen were, were basically, uh, you know, uh, deciding, you know, the fate of the, the, the economy of the country. And um, also the fact that, uh, that reducing Tunisian democracy to this procedural formal uh, democratic transition was seen as not uh, not sustainable at all. I mean, you can't just uh, tell people, you know, we have the freedom of speech and freedom of expression, even though these two, you know, um, gains that most Tunisians, you know, are very proud of that, you know, uh, people are able, you know, to express themselves freely have been um, tested as well, you know, have seen, you know, police brutality against, you know, uh, bloggers, but also, you know, protesters. Just recently, before a um, few months before, um, bef uh, before you know uh, uh, the, the political crisis on July 25th, you know, have seen uh, minors have been being arrested by police uh, for for protesting against you know COVID-19, you know, strict measures. And of course, COVID-19 has come as 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 um, as a um, as uh, was was probably the best opportunity for 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 for, for Tunisians, you know, to finally uh, uh, you know uh, express their their anger and frustration that this government needs to go, that this political party, you know, has done much more harm than good for, for, for Tunisians. And uh, we have seen that, you know, the, 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 the government of Hisham Mashish, you know, which many Tunisians considered as probably the worst, you know, uh, government in modern Tunisian history when it comes to the extremely catastrophic and badly managed, you know, COVID-19 crisis we have seen in a country of, Less than 12 million people, you know, who haven't have been the highest death rate of, of, of COVID in the Arab world and Africa. This in itself was very traumatizing for Tunisians. You know, uh, I, I've been uh, reading and listening to some friends, you know, talking about this decade as probably the most traumatizing since the fall of the Ben Ali regime. The fact, you know, that that all their hopes have been dashed, that you know, young Tunisians have been pushed to despair. We have seen young Tunisians, you know braving you know the seas and trying to seek you know better future in europe you know by uh seeking by by uh by uh, uh, by, uh through you know a uh, uh, regular you know um, migrant routes whether in italy and right. and elsewhere and so um uh, this this definitely has 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 made, made has made Tunisia realize that uh Nahda was probably not no more sustainable as a political party to address the issues, but also uh, to respond to the hopes that they have. A lot of Tunisians have have have, uh, have put in, in in that party. You know, just remember that 2011. Now that had had uh, was uh, had um, 
collected, you know, probably the, the, the largest number of votes. And uh, to, uh, before, you know, July 25th, you know, their, their, their electoral um, weight, you know, has, 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 has dropped to probably less than 400,000 people. You According know, to people. recent polling, you mean? Exactly, exactly, yeah. and that 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 shows, you know, that 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 uh, that the, the the party uh, was no longer able, you know, to sustain itself just through this very rigid uh, procedural type of, you know, um, a de a de democratic, you know, uh, transition where where democracy is only uh, seen from this very uh, uh, narrow lens of, you know, winning elections uh, right. and you know uh, and and and. To preserving some kind of normalcy when it comes, you know, to to uh, to uh, having you know a functioning parliament. Unfortunately, the parliament was no longer functions. Have it has become a scene of dysfunctional system that uh, that what well, that you know pushed you know Saeed you know to, to finally you know uh, decide you know that this thing needs to to end. And you you did mention international financial institutions and also um, the harrowing uh, stories of of. Tunisians and others um, seeking to cross the Mediterranean into Europe. And that takes us to what I think is, is, is your area of specialization, which is um, the, the regional context and foreign relations um, of, of Tunisia and Libya. And my question is, um, to what extent are regional and international actors whether governments or international institutions like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, playing a significant role in the current crisis? And do you anticipate they will have a significant influence on its outcome? And also maybe on the flip side, how you think developments within Tunisia might have an impact on, for example, the crisis in Libya uh, next door or just as Tunisia in 2010, 2011 um, had such regional significance, whether you think it still retains that capacity in the coming weeks and months? Mm -hmm. Well, regarding the international financial institutions, especially the IMF, it has been seen by uh, civil society, uh, in particular the uh, the labor union GTT, mm -hmm. as having exacerbated you know, the, 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 uh, the economic crisis in Tunisia by imposing uh, uh, structural reforms, whether administration, you know, slash on wage bill and all that, uh, it was considered as a way that Tunisia is losing its financial sovereignty, but not also, not, not only that, also it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sovereignty when it comes, you know, to, uh, to, to, you know, to land, for example, reform or even water scare, or water resources. And uh, the fact that Tunisian economy has, 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 has spiraled into, you know, the depression with the, um, with the with the decrease in the in the production, for example, of phosphatus, which is Tunisia's you know main um, main industrial uh, production, um, all of these things you know compounded with with the uh, with uh, with the uh, with the pressure from the IMF you know to 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 introduce you know very painful uh, reforms you know in the Tunisian administration you know has pushed well they to, call them reforms yeah quote unquote you know <laughs> they, uh, they 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 they, they pushed, you know, um, uh, a, a lot of people, you know, to to you know to protest because uh, of the inability of a lot of them, you know, to to face, you know, you know the 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 uh, rise in prices in you know in a stable food, but also uh, the fact that you know a lot of people have lost their jobs because um, of, of of these of, of of these measures, you know, that uh, the Tunisian government, uh, successive governments since 2011 have been taken, and so that will be the biggest challenge for Kais Said, you know, how how uh, these neoliberal economic choices that do not date back actually to 2011, actually they date back even further, I mean- uh, uh, Sure, um, to, to, to the to, 1980s, uh, I believe. Exactly, I mean, to Ben Ali. And so that's, that's, that will be, be, become, you know, the, 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 str the strongest, you know, uh, challenge, you know, for, 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 for Saeed and, 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 his, uh, and his upcoming government, you know. If it, uh, and if I may ask, has he taken a position on these issues, whether, in terms of um, uh, committing to implement the IMF program or opposition to it, do we know what his views are on this issue? Well, for the time being, his main, uh, let's say, crusade is fight on corruption by mm -hmm. trying, you know, to to uh, to reduce the uh, the impact of of 
of the of uh, of a decade of mismanagement uh, with the three with the with the consecutive government. Uh, especially one of his immediate you know measures is um, is asking, for example, pharmacists and uh, traders you know to to reduce prices of you know of goods for Tunisians because. Um, as a someone who is uh, who has been uh, you know elected by by people, you know he 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 listens to to to, to their pleas, and for him um, th th that decision was considered, of course, by some as populists. You know, we can't just you know uh, uh, introduce reforms just you know by asking you know let's say you know uh, traders you know to reduce prices because that's uh, that's something that you know not sustainable in the, in the long run. Um, for the time being, I, I guess the, the 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 challenge of you know the 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 the, the IMF you know um, uh, uh, asking you know for more more you know for, for reforms and uh, taking measures is something that is not on the plate. The fact that maybe that that, that he uh, chose uh, just you know a few hours ago, uh, Prime Minister who is the uh, the current head of the Tunisian Central Bank, who is an economist who's got very good connections with uh, in international institutions, especially he worked as a as a, as a, um, he was the actually the Libya rep representative of the World Bank uh, a few years ago. Uh, probably that would change the way he would approach you know these ins uh, ins institutional um, financial institutions but it all remains very unclear but also unpredictable you know let's I say there remains someone who's very enigmatic enigmatic you know he can change his mind uh, especially when it comes you know to these you know uh, to, to addressing you know those uh, those challenges of uh, uh, of, you know, especially the, the bailouts from for, for, from mm -hmm. from the from the from the IMF in particular. Yeah, and on constitutional law as well, it seems. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's that's another another issue that he probably he he handles very well, and he and he he was able, you know, to to kind of um, exercise some kind of pay, you know pain, you know, in in his uh, in his political opponents, in particular Nahda, which which in some ways, you know, made. Made the Nahda, you know, uh, Nahda, uh, you know, uh, main official to you know go go wild, you know, that uh, what, what he was doing is 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 is, is a coup that uh, that um, against you know the legitimacy of uh, of, of the parliament and um, but again things you know remain for the time being unsolved and we don't know maybe things will will, will, will I mean this crisis will be the fluid, yeah. Yeah, exactly. but, but turning again back back to the regional and, and international context also um there have been for example um indications that um saudi arabia and the united arab emirates are stepping in um to to support um uh, Syed, that uh, turkey has also taken a position uh, on this issue and qatar in support of a nahda to what extent do you see these um, uh, regional players uh, exercising significant influence over Tunisian developments? And perhaps also if you could speak specifically about um, what, if any, influence um, Libya and the situation in Libya is having on developments in, in Tunisia and how developments in Tunisia might have an impact on, on the situation in Libya. Well, I have to say that these regional actors, you know, uh, whether from uh, the, the, the UAE and Co camp and versus Qatar and Co camp, you know, have always had you know um, uh, a strong impact on post Ben Ali Tunisia, you know, through mm -hmm. their support from uh, the Islamist Nahda party from 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 uh, from Turkey and Qatar, but also from uh, what some term the counter revolutionary uh, camp, you know, from UAE. The, the ones who have always considered Muslim Brotherhood as an enemy to be eradicated, and the fact, you know, that um, uh, that uh, the Egyptian uh, scenario in 2013 of, uh, of, the, of the of the of the of the of Sisi coup has, has succeeded um, made uh, uh, made a lot of people question what happened in July 25th as another UAE, you know, maneuver to destabilize Tunisia. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the the people who, uh, who 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 consider, or the camp that considers, you know, what happened July twenty fifth, you know, who have to say, you know, just um, for the sake of being fair, that not only Islam is another, you know, consider what happened July twenty fifth as a coup, but also other uh, uh, some opposition parties, including, you know, uh, uh, from uh, from um, uh, from you know um, the parties such as, you know. Um, 
uh, Hammam is, you know, uh, uh, the Pan Arabist uh... party and and uh, and uh, the. Um, the, uh, the democratic current, you know, the democracy of uh, Muhammad Abu. These, these, they, they, they considered what happened, you know, something that is akin to, you know, a coup. I mean, whether, I mean, of course, you know, the 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 the, the characterization, you know, it can be whether it's constitutional or not. That's not really, you know, the issue. But it's something that, you know, uh, that is considered, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, some some uh, some uh, goal against, you know, the the the, uh, right. the the will of the of the of the. Um, of the people. So coming back to the question of uh, of, the, of these regional actors, of course they have a lot, you know, a lot of influence, and um, and uh, and we were expecting, of course, you know, you know, the, the the UAE and Saudi Arabia camp, you know, to come in strong support of uh, Syed. Uh, that probably didn't really uh, happen. The, uh, the, the, I think that was that was a surprise. That was a, a, a um, there was an expectation that they would. Uh, that there would be use of, you know, term of terms of such as, you know, eradicate the Muslim Brotherhood, and finally Tunisia is free from from these, you know, uh, from these terrorists, quote unquote. You know, so especially when we hear some of those that rhetoric coming from from uh, media that is related to this camp. But uh, the, the the tone was was more moderate, including from CC and of Egypt. Uh, even though, you know, he, he sent, you know, um, a message to Saeed, you know, uh, supporting his decision, you know. Of, uh, and he sent his foreign minister, I believe. As well, yes, his foreign yeah. minister came and, you know, uh, and, um, and uh, uh, had, you know, a um, uh, uh, discussion with, with, with Saeed. But before, uh, but that was done in consultation with Algeria. Let's, uh, let's remember that Algeria has, has, um, uh, uh, its stance towards Tunisia has always been strong when it comes, you know, to try, and uh, and um, uh, um, play as uh, you know as a mediator uh, when it comes, for example, to let's say to the Libyan question. And Algerian regime has never been uh, uh, didn't doesn't have this enmity towards Muslim Brotherhood or Islamists in general. And so that uh, in some ways the consultation between the Egyptian counterpart and their and, and the Algerians uh, um, produced some kind of you know moderate tone where it's neither supporting you know. Uh, uh, in, in fact, that you know, no, not supporting you know the eradication of quote unquote of Muslim Brotherhood as some would have hoped you know for an Egyptian scenario, nor um, uh, uh, nor uh, nor embracing you know the you know the, the the narrative that this was a coup. So so the, the moderate stance you know when, when it comes you know to, to, to what happened in Tunisia is all about an legit legitimacy, even, including Saudi Arabia and UAE for 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 them you know what happened what what ma what matters the most is uh, stability of the country and the 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 the, the, the democratic you know process you know you know uh, goes on you know as 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 uh, you know as um, as as um, as expected, you know, from from you know from from Tunisians, uh, um, same tone you have seen it with one of the Americans, you know, uh, being careful not to use the term coup. So because because you know uh, again uh, it shows you know um, that all of all of those actors trying to harmonize their discourse so that it doesn't uh, slip into uh, you know some war of words between you know those who support side and those who do, who do not. Yeah. Now for the camp of Qatar, Qatar wasn't very uh, vocal when it comes, you know, to them. To it was the, primarily the, Turkey, I believe. Turkey, I have to say, uh, their, their their position was quite strong at the beginning, with mm -hmm. um, with the, I think the spokesman from the Minister of Foreign Affairs calling this a coup, and um, by invoking, you know, some kind of traumatizing, you know, uh, episodes of of of, of, uh, of historical coups that happened in Turkey, and that's something about I think a mischaracterization from 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 that from that person because uh, Turkish, you know, uh, army is not a Tunisian army, and so the, the both histories, you know, of of both armies, you know, they very different. Yeah. Very different, exactly. Now their tone has been, uh, you know. Um, uh, has has been you know moderated ever since, and uh, they still still call it a coup. What happened July the twenty fifth, you know? But uh, all of them they agree, uh, and that uh, all of these parties agree and try to harmonize, you know, their their um, uh, their position that that what matters is that they listen to the will of the Tunisian people. And we have seen Tunisian people they are supporting overwhelmingly Saeed with his decision of you know freezing the parliament, even the, even even if a lot of them they wanted, you know the to the dissolution of the parliament, but Said, you know, was smart enough not to, you know, to go into this very extreme position and freezing of the parliament for 30 days. 
uh, was a way to, to suck the anger of the people. And so uh, the fact that he, he, he um, in the recent polls, you know, he enjoyed 87% of support with his decision to, to do that. Um, that's something that regional actors, you know, had to take into account and produce, you know, a position that is very moderate, that does not clash with, uh, with, uh, with, um, with, with, the, with, with Tunisian, you know, uh, sovereignty, but also the fact that, um, that uh, what happened, you know, as I said, in Egypt should not be considered, should not be projected in Tunisia because it will exacerbate even more rivalries, but also uh, embolden some, some, you know, some, uh, some uh, regional factions who are still intent on eradicating the Muslim Brotherhood. And now I come to Libya here, which uh, whose, whose specific case and strong relationship between not only Tunisian people and Libyan people given you know historical ties but also socioeconomic you know uh, ties given the fact that you know Tun Libyan economy Tunisian economy is to depend on Libyan economy before the the the, the uprising in 2011 against Gaddafi but the fact that the country has gone into a an 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 open civil war and then a proxy war whereby all of these actors are taking part from the You're one talking side. About Libya now, of course. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. From the one side, you know, Turkey and its allies, you know, supporting, you know, the 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 the, um, the Islamist um, uh, factions in uh, Western Libya, and Western Libya is 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 uh, contiguous with with, with Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a fear when Saeed decided, you know, to freeze the parliament on the Libyan counterpart that that will affect their position, given the fact that. Um, their enemy or their, their ideological enemy in the east, you know, in, in, in Cyrenaica, uh, where in the in the um, presented by the head of the Libyan National Army, uh, General Khalifa Haftar, who is a staunch um, uh, supporter of uh, of of uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Egyptian President uh, Sisi, but also someone who vowed, you know, to eradicate Muslim Brotherhood, and so. That existential threat of um, of someone like Haftar affect will, will affect, affect you know uh, Libyan uh, Islamists you know strongly and what happened in Tunisia you know uh, especially with the Tunisian Nahda being seen you know as totally you know um, humiliated when uh, they 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 they're head of uh, the, the, the the head of the party but also the symbolic you know head of uh, the parliament uh, no longer you know enjoys you know that. That, uh, that that international you know um uh respect that he used to have you know like uh, right now you know he was recently you know admitted to hospital because of uh, some you know kind of complications you know but also the fact that you know that there was all uh, he was also playing a big role Ranushi, you know in the uh, in the reconciliation between you know different libyan factions now he's he's no longer um, you know relevant to the to 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 you know to the tunisian i mean the stature has diminished exactly and so that that will represent a danger enough for uh, for the libyan uh, for at least you know, for 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 libya right now a country that has recently um reach some kind of truce between, you know, both, you know, uh, factions, whether in the East, you know, uh, under the, uh, uh, under General Haftar, and in the West, you know, with the new, um, uh, the new uh, um, United Nations. Government of the National Accord. You know, yeah. Libyan political dialogue, and uh, they, they're having, they're going to have uh, elections at the end of the year, and uh, the fact, you know, that also Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi wants, you know, to be part of this whole process mm -hmm. will definitely, you know, affect, you know, the, 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 the future of the Libyan Islamists given that they no longer enjoy the support of, 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 the, of the Tunisian counterparts. Um, I, I guess probably Algeria would, would chime in and try, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, probably play, you know, uh, a mediator between, between, uh, between these different parties. But, you know, again, things are so unpredictable right now. We'll have to wait and see, you know, after what happens after 30 days, maybe things will change, you know, um, uh, change, you know, uh, regarding the you know, side decision or regarding the parliament and the future of another, whether another is going to, uh, to 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 be the same another before July the twenty fifth, or there will be some kind of restructuring or reorganization within it, within the party itself, and try you know to present themselves again maybe as you know less um, uh, less dependent on the on the decisions of of of, of Ranushi who has been there for, for since nineteen eighty one, and so I guess a lot of of, of stakes you know are there uh, to 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 see how. How the future of another, how it will affect, you know, the, the, that of uh, of the Libyan, uh, of, of whether Libya or, um, or 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 other, you know, regional actors. 
Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned um, unpredictability, um, but nevertheless, I, I, I would like to ask you, um, looking forward, what's your prognosis about where Tunisia is heading in the coming weeks and months? And specifically, um, what do you think are the main issues that we should be keeping an eye on as an indicator of how things might de be developing? Is it, for example, what, um, uh, what the presidency decides to do at the conclusion of the initial 30-day suspension? Is it um, uh, policy responses from a Nahda? Is it regional factors? What do you think are the main indicators that would help us understand where Tunisia is heading? Well, I, I guess you know for the time being there is a there's a lot of pushback from Tunisian civil society organizations, but also Tunisian political opposition uh, asking for a clear roadmap. What is ahead? What what is I side you know is preparing for for things to come uh, you know uh, you know to, to come soon. Um, just you know a few hours ago, one of the uh, one of the political parties you know that was uh, uh, that had an alliance with the Nahda back in 2011 and uh, Takatul has um, has asked you know for for the uh, for holding you know early legislative elections. Uh, some people, uh, of course, you know they they uh, they are. Um, they uh, they are endorsing this, but some others they see it as unrealistic. You can't you know organize elections given you know the current health circumstances, but also you know the short time how this is going to be sustainable. But that's one thing. So a clear roadmap of what will Saeed do in the next you know few weeks and months. You know regarding uh, there's a lot of also pressure for, for, uh, on him from uh, civil society organizations, including for instance the uh, the the, the um, the, the human rights organizations, um, whether women uh, organizations, but also uh, Tunisian journalist union. union. Uh, let's remember that, unfortunately, recently, you know, Al Jazeera uh, was 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 forced to shut down okay. its offices by some security forces, uh, security forces, and that was condemned by the Tunisian uh, journalist union. So um, there is a fear, of course, and worries from uh, sections of Tunisian civil society regarding, you know. Um, the gains of Tunisian revolution, freedom of expression, but also civil liberties. Um, so that will be the biggest challenge, you know, that he, uh, he, uh, that Said, you know, needs to, you know, to, um, uh, to engage into serious conversation about that. He, so far, he has has met with with these actors, but again, things remain uh, unclear for the time being because uh, Said, there is, he, he tends sometimes to rehearse sometimes his his, his decisions, you know. Uh, that's why I feel that sometimes he might change, you know, his, 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 his mind regarding, you know, uh, going ahead with his war, he used to term war against, you know, uh, corruption and all these, um, sometimes he talks about these, uh, these enemies or actors, you know, who are trying, you know, to hijack the whole process. Um, I mean, it's, it's beautiful rhetoric for, you know, uh, for average Tunisian, you know, to consume, but on the ground, you know, how is he going to implement these things, you know, given the biggest challenge that faces him when it comes to the economy, uh, but also social unrest. You know, um, he was able, of course, you know, in a matter of a uh, uh, week, you know, to, to suck the anger of Tunisians, but, you know, for how long? I mean, uh, the, the euphoria will, will die down one day and people will find themselves again, you know, unemployed without jobs. Well, uh, even though I have to say uh, things are going sl slightly better when it comes, you know, to COVID-19, uh, um, uh, um, um, health crisis with more uh, with Tunisia receiving more and more uh, vaccines from all over the world. So far, I think the country has did, had has uh, received six million doses of vaccines, which is enough you know, for 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 Tunisians at least you know fifty percent according to the to the to the COVID nineteen you know committee um, uh, saying that you know that by probably by October you know fifty percent of the population would be va vaccinated. So that would give some kind of hope for Tunisians that you know. Said in some ways, you know, is delivering in some of his promises, but the rest, you know, remains, you know, totally unknown given the fact, you know, that there isn't a clear plan from Said, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to find, you know, long-term solutions to these issues. And that will be something that he will uh, need to, uh, to, to tackle not only with civil society organizations, but also with the political, uh, with the, with the political parties and see if after 10 days or after you know 20 days because right now we're on the 10th day you know since the freezing of the parliament after the 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 the, the end of this 30 day 30 day for freeze of the parliament what would happen to the new parliament will there be the same you know uh, figures you know let's know that some mps have been arrested you know over 
some uh, some some you know some uh, concerns I mean, that some of them they uh, they were uh, indicted with uh, with either uh, with having um, uh, corrupt you know uh, cor um, uh, corrupt practices or a corrupt uh, link, link, links to some corrupt uh, businessmen. Uh, the fact that you know that he he was given this this list of 460 businessmen who are corrupt uh, kind of gives people hope you know that he's doing you know something you know to kind of uh, in, in his war against corruption. But uh, what will happen you know after uh, all of these you know people who have been arrested you know will there be some kind of you know um, sustainable solution to, uh, to, 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 the, to the political crisis. Going personally... beyond the populist playbook. Exactly, exactly. And I personally doubt it, but I mean, I wish him, you know, that he would, you know, would be able, you know, to, to deliver, to, to, to deliver, you know, what people have been asking him. Um, but, but for the time being, again, a lot of most Tunisians, you know, all they care about, not about, you know, the, these civil liberties, but mainly the immediate needs, you know, uh, um, right. uh, Economic, the, 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 that this, that the economic situation will, will uh, if it if it improves, then I guess uh, Saeed probably will have um, will have uh, uh, one at least one of his uh, one, one of his bets. You know that uh, corruption will, will will at least be reduced. I mean, because uh, I, I doubt that it will be it will be uh, 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 eradicated. Yeah. That. So so that remains the main challenge, you know, how he will address, you know, what the people have, you know, have, have, uh, have uh, what he promised the people and what people, you know, almost blindly, you know, supported him, that he will bring some kind of change because he's someone who's seen as clean, as someone who's, who has never done any politics and someone who's very trustworthy and uh, how the other, as I say, political parties will, will react, in particular, the Tunisian Islamists, because they still remain a power to be reckoned with. I mean, now that is not finished, you know, as some people would think, you know, and so how he is going to deal with them, that's something that will remain, you know, open for questions in the next few days and months. Right. Um, uh, finally, uh, if I can ask you, um, you're a co-founder of both um, Adam and the Voice of Tunisian Black uh, Women Collective. Um, could you perhaps um, uh, take a few minutes just to give us an indication of what the agenda of, of these organizations is um, and, and what are the main challenges um, that, uh, that they're seeking um, uh, to deal with? Well, one of the gains of the Tunisian revolution is that uh, black Tunisians, you know, finally come out, come out of the dark and have become, they, they, had, they, have, they have become, you know, uh, some kind of reality to most Tunisians, you know, the fact that, you know, that, uh, that they had to, uh, Use you know the Tunisian uh, the the, the um, Tunisian revolution as uh, when it comes you know to uh, seeking you know um, uh, rights for the uh, as a minority uh, group uh, that has been oppressed you know for a long time and they have been invisible from either political scene but also from the public space the fact that Tunisia remains the only country in the region where um, there was a law that was passed in 2018 to criminalize racial discrimination was the fruit of these two organizations, in particular Adam, but also other organizations, you know, that have been uh, uh, pushing Tunisian legislature to pass a law uh, that will uh, prevent any type of attack, be it physical or even moral against, you know, people of African descent, but also black Tunisians who uh, a lot of them, they are the product of, you know, the trans of slave trade, you know, and um, uh, the fact that 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 marginalization of, of this population, you know, since the independence of Tunisia has made a lot of them seek, you know, some kind of justice. And uh, I guess, you know, one of the also other gains of Tunisian revolution, you know, is the transitional justice process that was um, uh, initiated by the uh, Truth and Dignity Commission, uh, which, is, uh, which has been set up you know, in the same vein as, what, uh, as, as other uh, truth commissions, whether in South Africa or in Latin America, after the, the, the fall of the, um, the, the, the South Africa and, other, and Latin America went uh, to the uh, dictatorial regimes there. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that Tunisian uh, uh, Truth and Dignity Commission has taken up the, the grievances of black Tunisians and uh, hmm. has led also to, 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 to these organizations you know, to, uh, to, um, to bring up the issue of marginalization of, of black Tunisians as, uh, as, 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 the, uh, as, as, as a minority group, but also that the fact that uh, most black Tunisians, you know, they live 
in the areas where they're uh, in the south of the country where uh, marginalization still economic and social marginalization still uh, continues and this is where a, a lot of um uh, social unrest you know from 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 uh, from um, marginalized groups, you know, uh, whether from Sidi Bouzid or from like uh, uh, other uh, small, you know, areas in Midnin and Tatawin, where you have a strong, you know, black presence, made the the the, the these um, uh, um, uh, civil society groups, you know, come out and try to bring the issue of anti-black racism and let's. Um, um, I think the, the 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 fact you know that what happened last year with the, with the, with the, with the death of George Floyd has brought also the issue that issue it's a big taboo of course in Tunisia and across the Arab world the anti-black racism remains something that is not discussed but it's it's widely discussed of course in in, in the West as a as a big issue when it comes to the marginalization so I guess um, uh, uh, democracy in some ways allowed these minority groups you know to uh to come out of the dark and uh and ask for the same rights as their 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 non-black uh, you know uh counterparts i mean um for example um, i mean i can talk about for example the 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 um, uh, the fight uh, for uh, uh, from uh, for, for example the LGBTQ community in Tunisia for for uh, to, to recognize you know that there is discrimination against them um that's something that a lot of Tunisians are not um are not willing you know to, to you know to uh to, to um to uh to, to leave uh, um, to let it to, to let it go because these are the precious gains of the Tunisian revolution that any minority group population or any uh, person who feels marginalized they see in the gains of the Tunisian democracy a way for them to uh to hope to uh to to preserve the, this this hard one uh, um, uh, rights that no other country in the region are, are, are is able you know, to to um, to uh, yeah. uh, to gain because of how repressive the regimes are there. Whereas this 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 uh, this glimmer of hope, yeah. of fresh air that, that Tunisian revolution has brought made these you know uh, minority groups you know. Uh, capitalize on on the, on the on these uh, democratic gains. But it's fascinating that, that you're putting this in the context not only of um, changes within Tunisia as a result of of um, the changes that you've had there in the past um, decade, but also that the brutal murder of George Floyd in the United States is is having a global impact. Um, beyond just um, you know the United States and and Western Europe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it's it's something. It's only the only country where there had been protests against you know the the brutal murder of George Floyd was Tunisia and to and and uh, Palestine. In Palestine, of course, there were people who were who were having you know these you know uh, uh, graffiti of George Floyd you know in in the murals. But apart from that, no other country in, in the region has. To you know the, that 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 murder, you know, kind of affected them because it's not it doesn't have that symbolism, and because of the issue of race being totally, you know, swept under the carpet, you know, whether from Tunisia, from other Arab countries, civil society organizations. That being said, I guess the Tunisian example, quote unquote, you know, of uh, of having you know this vibrant civil society has given has, has sent shockwaves, you know, to other Arab countries. I mean, I, I, I'm including countries like Morocco, where the issue of race racism has been uh, brought, uh, you know, um, uh, brought to the surface. But you know, having you know strong legislation, you know, that will legislate on uh, on racism, Tunisia remains the only exception there. But that's thanks, you know, to the democracy that uh, and 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 the fact that you know. Um, the fight for 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 these civil liberties uh, that Tunisians are are not willing, you know, to to you know to, to lose, even if there are fears that I side, you know, might you know uh, might turn, you know, uh, autocratic at some point. Uh, I remain hopeful, you know, that these hardly won gains I mean, will not be um, will not be lost anytime soon. Well, and hopefully here too, Tunisia will be um, a pioneer rather than uh, an exception. Uh, Huda Mziudat, thank you so much uh, for joining us and sharing your knowledge and insights about uh, Tunisia with us on uh, Connections. Thank you once again.
Thank you, Maureen, for, for, for having me. And thank you for this uh, opportunity to, 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 you know, to partake, you know, at least, you know, some of, the, of what I, I consider uh, what, what, what comes, what will come ahead, you know, for, to, for the Tunisian Baden democracy, which I still believe that it's, uh, it will, uh, it will survive the test of times. And uh, we hope you're right. Thank you once again. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you.